Lord, thank you for your kindness and love. Uh, thank you for all the good things you've let us hear. Lord, we pray for grace, uh, more grace from you, not to be hearers of the word only, but doers. We pray for boldness from you, Lord, that we might open our mouths as we ought to speak. We need this from you, Lord. Uh, our flesh is weak. Our spirit is willing. Our flesh is weak. Please rebuke the devil far away and uh, all the thoughts that would come into our minds from the enemy. We would, may we not fear man, but fear you and, and love you and our fellow man. Please guide us in this time, Lord. Please help me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. Uh, just give a, a few thoughts. There's been so much shared, so many topics uh, opened up yesterday and today. And uh, quite frankly, we didn't even touch 0.0001% of, uh, of um, things to do with the gospel and evangelizing. Um, because quite frankly, it's not just the subject of a conference. The gospel is central to the Bible. And evangelization is central to the work of the Christian life and the church. So really... Uh, it's kind of inappropriate to be allotted to a conference, and the good thing is we don't do that in church when we meet together. That's what you're hearing from the scriptures. You're hearing the gospel. You're hearing its centrality in our lives, and we need grace from God for that to be so. I heard a lot of great things opened up, and uh, most of you, since you go here, you're pretty familiar with all the subjects, and uh, that's good. I want us to uh, take a few thoughts here from the scriptures and uh, a few practical things and we'll go from there. Uh, one verse that was important to me, well I already mentioned some in praying. You remember Paul, he said, pray for me that I might have boldness to open my mouth, my mouth as I ought, that I might speak boldly as I ought to speak and you know to make the gospel known. I think that's pretty amazing if Paul needed prayer for boldness. <laughs> Uh, we certainly do. I mean, uh, that's okay. It's okay to pray. It's, it's natural to fear. Remember he said, when I was with you, I was in fear and weakness and much trembling when I made known the gospel to you. Um, those are all natural things. And quite frankly, the theological stuff is very, very important. We need to make sure that we're saying what is right. I think in earlier sessions it was mentioned, you know, the zeal of Actually, I think when uh, a brother was praying, it was mentioned the zeal of cults. But it's a worthless zeal because they don't have any, any truth. And obviously, we shouldn't compare ourselves to the world. But it is true. You know, Jesus said, the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we have eternity to live, but we only have a short time here on earth. And we sometimes forget that. You know, we don't fear death anymore. We're not striving to get every minute of life out of life that we have because we have eternal life. Uh, we're probably more relaxed than we should be. But uh, at the same time, we should be relaxed. We should be able to rest in the Lord, know that salvation is of Him, and uh, zealously preach the gospel and, and love for Him. Um, those are helpful verses for me. Uh, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous is bold as a lion. Um, we need to remember those things. We also need to remember that, uh, like it says in Ephesians uh, five, 6, um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against, against these things. Uh, in Corinthians, uh, tearing down the strongholds of the mind. Uh, when we're going to share the gospel, it's not, it's not all practical. It's not all, you know, there's something supernatural going on. And we need to pray against those things. I mean, I've talked to all sorts of different types of people, and people will ask me, you know, uh, how do you talk to atheists? Or how do you talk to Orthodox who are very staunch? Or animists in Africa? Or, you know, different categories of people. And they'll say, you know, how do you deal with that? And quite frankly... You know, they say, do they listen to the gospel, etc. The only reason they listen to the gospel is because God prepared that, that door. So, 
you know, we can, we can have special learning and we can study the issues and the good arguments and we should do that. But the fact is, people are going to hear the gospel because God binds the wicked one. He lets them hear. He gives them repentance. He gives them faith. God, I mean, there's, there's a lot to be said about praying. And uh, we should pray. I mean, even if it's just praying before you talk to somebody in your mind, you know, God, help me. Bind the wicked one. Please... Uh, Please uh, save this soul. There's a lot to be said there because it's not all. Ah, salvation is of the Lord. Why should we not pray then? That he would save, that he would give us open doors and he would speak. It's not of my intellectual power. I mean, I, I can have good arguments, but, uh, and those are good. It's good to have good arguments, but at the same time, salvation is of God and we should seek him in uh, evangelizing. Another good verse here is uh, 1 Peter 2.12. Um, it says, I should probably read it in uh, ESV before you have it down here in King James. 1 Peter 2.12. Really, really good. Um, here's what it says. That is 2 Peter 2.12, which is very, very different. <laughs> 2 Peter 2.12. There we go. 1 Peter 2.12 uh, Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Um, that that's shows something. We need to have honest lives. Um, and honorable lives. You know, uh, we're going to do evangelism uh, out in the parks and out in the streets and the metro entrances. That is great stuff to do. And that is an important part of evangelism. But we're also going to evangelize our colleagues, um, people that you work with. I mean, they're going to see your life. And uh, it's important for the sake of the gospel to have an honorable life. That doesn't mean you're perfect, but it means you're humble, willing to ask forgiveness, um, truthful. Uh, willing to stand alone, even be mocked. There's times that there's times when you might have a job where you're just the the joke of work. But keep your life honorable, and uh, and do good works. I know uh, I'm going to other countries sometimes to share the gospel. You get accused of all sorts of things, and uh, if you have some good works along with that, you know. Uh, it often shuts the mouth. You know, I've had people tell me, you know, you're just an American, you have no place here, da, 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 why are you talking to us about God? And I said, hey, I did the same thing in America. You know, I preached the gospel on the streets, I preached the gospel in, in jails for years and years. And to hear about good works, like, you know, helping people in jails or stuff like that, uh, it shuts their mouth. It really does. And that's, that's what God designed. I think uh, we should be involved in good works. Um, for God's glory, not for some self-righteousness. But we do good works to shut the mouths of uh, people who would speak evil of us. And also, uh, it opens the door for, a for the gospel. I think of uh, Otilia helps uh, an older elderly lady. And because she helps her, she's able to share the gospel. I don't know if I could go to that old lady on the street and, like, you know... Uh, you know, talk to her. Maybe I could. In fact, I've seen that. I remember she had a magazine from a cult, and I told her, hey, this is wrong. This is what the Bible says. So, yes, you can go talk to an old lady on the street, but doing good works also open special doors. Um, you know, I think you get to read from the Bible with her. I mean, come on. What could be a better thing to do with somebody than that, than to read God's Word and then discuss, discuss God's Word? So uh, we need to be rich in good works. And with that, I say this really fits uh, all of us because we all have uh, unique giftings. We're all different people. That's, that's what I was looking, you know, sitting in the back looking at everybody. We're all such different people. You know, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we wouldn't be in this room together, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, we, we have different gifts. We have different uh, different likes, 
Um, and those things are all acceptable uh, to use for the gospel. You know, you can think about your personality and how you can use that, your personality, your situation, how you can use that to the furtherance of the gospel, whether that's maybe you bake cookies and give them to your neighbor with a gospel tract, or you help in some, some physical way or uh, with a need of somebody, or you... I mean, it's limitless. Think about your personality, whether you go in the park and play soccer with people uh, so that you can talk to them about Jesus Christ. I mean, before I got old, I used to do that all the time. And, uh, well, basketball, you know, it's a different sport. So if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. So if we talk to people and share the gospel and don't love them or don't have love, it's, uh, it's just noise. That's, that's what the Bible says here. So uh, we should have love, you know. Um, obviously, God can use the truth of his word shared without love. But uh, you, you think of the, the demon-possessed girl who followed Paul and his partner around saying, these people are the servants of God who show the way. You know, he, he rebuked her. And, the, you know, the devil was out of her. But that's, uh, we, we shouldn't share the gospel without love, but don't let that be an excuse not to share the gospel because the fact is you might not have an emotional, emotional sentiment of love. I doubt my wife has a warm, fuzzy feeling every night when she washes the dishes, but that's love, you know? And we, when we share the gospel with somebody, we are loving them, even if that emotional feeling isn't there but we do want to make sure that there's love and that is an important thing and all oh, the doors that love will open and the walls that it will knock down um, I can't tell you I've been to some of the most dangerous places in the world you know before I was married and God protected us and I, I really think it was just because we love the people they knew we were there with God uh, and they knew we loved them. In America, you know, I'd go to Flint. Like, that was the high, second highest murder rate in my whole country. Um, and go there and share the gospel. Or, and no problem. But I think if you just went there to walk the streets and weren't there with love, you'd get in big trouble. Uh, same thing with the places we went in South Africa. Um, or, you know, even, even here. If you have love, there's a special opening. You know, if people sense that you love them. Uh, verse 2. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. So, I mean, there it is. We can understand all the, all the, all the mysteries of the scriptures. We have all knowledge, but we don't have love. You're nothing. We are nothing without love. Hmm? I don't think it's possible. I think it's just, <laughs> it's just. Uh, yeah, we gotta have love. Yeah, that's that's the point love. here. <laughs> you know, um, you can have knowledge and be proud. You know, knowledge can puff up. That's not an excuse not to get knowledge, but we want knowledge uh, balanced with love, mercy, and truth have met together. Verse 3, if I give away all I have and deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. You know, once again, if we, if we make sacrifices for the gospel, uh, even extreme sacrifices, and it's not, we don't have love, we have gained nothing. That's what God's word says. Mm -hmm. So when we show love, verse 4, love is patient and kind. So when we talk to people, we need to be patient and kind. Uh, love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. I think uh, those are all important attributes when we share the gospel, not to be arrogant. When we, when we, because we're talking about sin with people, you know, we're talking about, hey, you're a lying, thieving, murdering, adulterer at heart. You're a blasphemer. You're an idol worshiper. You can say those things with love and people are like, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Or you can say it with arrogance and they'll want to stone you. They might want to stone you if you say it with love too, but uh, you don't want to do it with arrogance. You'll be, surprised that, you'll be surprised the things you can talk about if you talk 
about it with love and uh, humility. And keeping in mind, the gospel doesn't say just that they're sinners, but that we're sinners. And we're one beggar showing another beggar where to get the free bread. Um, it's patient, kind, does not envy or boast, it's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. So, uh, not insisting on its own way. There are things, there are arguments when we share the gospel that we don't have to win. You know, people are going to bring up lots of subjects, and we could sweep the floor with them. You know, we could, we could show how they're wrong. We could make them look a fool in front of everybody. And sometimes that's appropriate. You know, rebuke the scorner and the simple will take heed. But... We don't, there's, there's things you don't have to win. You know, there's, there's essential things you do have to win. So somebody might have some strange scientific theory that they're bringing up about ice rings or, I don't know. They don't have, you don't have to fight and win every argument. You need to stick to the essentials. You know, there's tons of application of all this. I'm just trying to make it more towards the gospel here. In evangelizing, it's not irritable or resentful. So, people are going to call you names. They're going to say, you know, right while you're talking to them, they're going to accuse you of hypocrisy, all sorts of things. You just got to brush it off and keep going, not be resentful. Um, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. This is really good. Um, let me see how it says in, in King. No, I don't have it in King James here. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Um, we, we're not happy about evil, you know? If you love somebody, that doesn't just mean you accept them how they are. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, okay, this person is living in fornication or a homosexual or a nustuche. Love doesn't mean you just smile at them and pretend nothing is wrong, okay? Love does not rejoice in evil. It's grieved. It's sad. Um, the people who just accept you however you are, uh, they don't actually love you. They're just uh, selfish and proud and want everybody to like them. But love does not rejoice in evil. It rejoices in the truth. And we have the truth and we, we need to be like that. Uh, love bears all things. So there's an endurance. You know, you, you, there's certain uh, sacrifices made with sharing the gospel, with being a Christian. Uh, it believes all things. Um, we're going to trust in God's word that it won't return void. You know, we're going to trust that, hey, salvation is from him. Uh, those are some things we can believe. Um, it hopes in all things. We're, again, we're hoping in God to bring salvation. We're, we're hoping that uh, you know, no one is too lost. I was looking at one of the guys who was sitting up here with a, the tattoo on his neck sitting here nicely listening to the Word of God. That made me happy, you know? I don't know if he's really a Christian. I think so. I don't know. I didn't really talk to him. It made me happy to see him in here listening to God's Word. Um, we need to have hope that nobody is beyond, beyond being saved. Um, it endures all things. Love never ends. So until that person is dead, we can keep sharing the gospel with them. We can keep sharing the law and the gospel. Um, as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought as a child. I responded like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish things. And I think uh, that is important when it comes to uh, us sharing the gospel. Um, as children, especially single children, wow, they're the center of the universe. You know, it's good for you to have some brothers and sisters. It doesn't change that you think you're the center of the universe, but at least you visually see you're not. Um, we think like a child. We're, we're very selfish and, and immature. When we become men, uh, we need to give up childish things. And, and there is a sense that there's things in this life that we give up out of love. You know, I, I love, I love my, my wife and my family, so I don't live like a single man anymore. 
you know? Um, we're Christians. We love the Lord Jesus. So we don't live the same way as before. There's, there's things that we give up uh, for the sake of Jesus and the gospel. And it's not because they're bad things, but they're sometimes the enemy of the best is, is something good. You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying don't do anything good. I, basketball could be a way to share the gospel, but it also could be an idol. It could be something that eats up all your time. Uh, sometimes television programs or watching sports, they, uh, they're things that as a man, as a mature, uh, loving Christian, there's things that you, you need to set aside so that you have time for God and for others. Uh, I'm not saying your life should be a life of misery, you know what I'm saying? You guys understand the idea here, right? But there's different things God reveals to you. I, I don't want to like name mine and say it's yours. That wouldn't be fair. But there's different things God says to us to uh, give up to be a man. Um, that, that, that is uh, acting in, with mature love, with love for others. Um, for now we see through a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So, how do you get love? Sounds pretty poetic and beautiful, all the things that I said. First John 2, 5, But whoso keepeth his word in him verily, the love of God is perfected. So when we get into God's Word, we treasure God's Word, it, it lives in us. God's love is perfected in us. Um, also says, the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Ghost, if I'm quoting that right. God's Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. When His Spirit dwells in us, love is in us. His Word dwells in us. Love is in us. The more that God is in us, the more love there is. And the, the means that God controls us is through His Word and Spirit. So we want to be filled with His Spirit, and we want to be uh, students of His Word. Whoso keepeth His Word in Him verily, the love of God is perfected. So love is the essential ingredient in evangelism. Let us be sure we evangelize with love for God and people. Again, that's essential. We don't compromise the message for people because under the pretense of loving them. You know, that's, that's sick. It gets used against uh, people who hold to the truth of the scriptures a lot. You know, you don't love people. Um, but the truth is, yes, we do. We just want what's true for them. Have you ever seen a fat, spoiled brat before? I'm sure his mama thinks she loves him a lot. But she doesn't. Um, we need to love God and people. The message of the gospel must stay the same. Sin, God's character... Judgment to come, heaven and hell. The love of God showed to us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to pay for our sins and reconcile us to God. The command to repent and believe the gospel. Those are all essential ingredients of the gospel that we don't, we don't give away. We don't, we don't give up sin, talking about sin, uh, God's character, uh, how there's a day of judgment, a judgment to come. We don't give up the truths of heaven or hell. Um, we don't give up Jesus Christ and being real, living, dying, rising from the dead to pay for our sins and reconcile us to God. And certainly not the command that people should repent and believe the gospel. We have different personalities and gifts. One might stand in the open air and preach while another might give gifts of food with tracts. You should know who you are and the gifts God has given you to lovingly share the gospel with the lost. Know that no matter what you do, whether it be very confrontational or subtle, you'll be hated for Christ's sake. But don't be surprised if many people thank you. I almost always go out dragging my feet and come back clicking my heels for joy. The harvest is plenteous and the labors are few. Here are some ideas of means to share the gospel. Uh, number one, I'm almost done here, the most biblical open-air preaching, that's actually what going to all the world and preach the gospel means, to herald the gospel. Uh, number two, go out to talk to people about the gospel, whether in parks or anywhere you can engage people. 
Uh, number three, you can write letters, electronic or snail mail. You can give cards. Uh, show. Oh, I shared that. Okay. <laughs> um, told you the idea about Christmas cards at work with the. I use Ninel's tract. I put it in my family Christmas. Took a picture and wrote a Bible verse and stuck a tract in there and gave it to all my colleagues. I don't. I don't know ninety percent of my colleagues' names, but I got on the work. Uh, website and found out their names and uh, gave them, oh this is recorded <laughs> and gave them tracks you know and uh, it's okay it's not live <laughs> <laughs> you got it um, yeah give gifts with tracks you know giving you can give without love but you can't love without giving take the lost out to eat that's a really good thing or uh, Fill their mouth with food while you fill, while you fill their ears with the gospel. Um, have them over your home and do the same. You know, some of us are married or have homes or, you know, I don't think anybody here is living with their parents except the little guys. Um, you know, when you was living with my mom and dad, I couldn't, my mom, I couldn't invite anybody all on today. <laughs> okay. I couldn't invite, I couldn't invite people over to my house because it wasn't my house, but for those of you who have that resource, you have a place that's yours. The only thing holding you back from having people in your home is you, yeah. you know. And we can we can have people in our homes and uh, talk to them um, about the gospel. Um, you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't eat good meals. <laughs> All right. Uh, and lastly, just be be friendly. Matthew 5.43, you have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brother, your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Hey, look, there it is in Romanian. Atsa zidka sa izis sa iubesht pe aprapele tau, shi sa urešt pe vrashmašul tau. Dar jo vă spun, iubiți pe vrashmașii vostri, binecuvântați pe ce ce vă blastemă, faceți bine celor ce vă urăsc, și rugați-vă pentru ce ce vă asupresc și vă prigonesc. Ca să fiți fi ai tatul vostru care este în cer, căci el face să răsară soarele, soarele. Sau peste sau peste cei rai și peste cei buni, și da ploi peste cei drepți și peste cei nedrepți. Dacă iubiți numai pe cei ce vă iubesc, ce răsplată mai așteptați? Nu fac așa și vameși? I do not like vameși. I never had a problem with them till here. <laughs> Ooh, I understand now, you know? You don't want to be a vamish. You don't <laughs> anything but those vamish. So, <laughs> we, we should love other people, even those who don't. We seek to make friends, seek to talk to people who don't. Um, and I know it's totally opposite of the culture. I used to, uh, I used to go jogging in the park, and I would just, you know, be like, "Hey, salut, kunuziwa," scare people to death. Old people <laughs> thought I was going to kill them or something, you know. <laughs> just, just saying hi. That's that's how drastic it is. Just to salute people you don't know. That's how opposite this is to the world, especially here in Bucharest. You don't say hi to anybody. Um, so that's being kind. Use tracks. Uh, we have some tracks here. You guys are all familiar with these. The good millions. Uh, Ninel brought some of his tracks. Um, try to make 180s. You know, there's there's uh, resources you have, whether it's money, whether it's creativity, whether it's a piece of paper and a pen. Uh, you can do it. I mean, that was what why we have all these tons of manuscripts of the scriptures. People are like, hey, man, I love this guy. I don't want him to go to hell. I'm going to copy the Gospel of John for him and give it to him. You know? The, the, from the very beginning, they used tracks. They just, you know, use the scriptures. Um, we can use media, billboards, internet, uh, lots of good 
you can share links like I mentioned on Facebook or wherever you can find get on the eight you know just share a link to somebody something good uh, you can write articles you can engage people online you can make movies evangelistic interviews you know some of the resources that we've got to take part in 180 genius evolution versus God Noah etc um, do do what you can you know do something as that's what uh, Spurgeon said he had a three-point sermon do something do something do something and uh, oftentimes when I go out I think something is better than nothing you know obviously we don't want to do something wrong like something false but a word in the right direction handing out one track is better than nothing it's not as good as me standing on a box and open air preaching to 3,000 but it's better than nothing you know um, Take the talents you have and use them for the furtherance of the gospel. If you don't have them, find out, find those who do. Uh, let's work together as a body. Uh, Ten, you can share your testimony. Eleven, I'm sure your mind is full of ideas. And then I was going to show the video of Ninel who stole my thunder. <gasps> and and uh, there was the video with the pescari, but I'm glad that he shared it because the other brothers wouldn't have heard it.